So today we actually have a simulation of a bowel. Uh, I used this more than a decade ago to actually practice and it's actually a really good simulation because you could see the two layers uh, that it is at least present which simulates the mucosa and let's just call the other side uh, serosa. You do have other layers normally but for suturing technique, this is something that's super important that can actually help you get better by practicing. So today we're going to talk about how to do a bowel anastomosis and we're going to focus on doing a single layer hand sewn. The first thing that you have to make sure is number one is that the bowels that you're putting together are healthy. Number two, it's tension free, meaning it's not under tension. If you need to mobilize more than you have to because suturing something under tension will eventually break down. Uh, number three, you want to make sure that there is no size discrepancy, that they're pretty much equal, equal in length and pretty much width. And the first thing that I'm going to do is actually just to put a stay suture on the other end. This will allow it to help me see the edges and align the guts together. There you go, clamp this one. And whenever we were suturing uh, bowel, the important thing is that we use absorbable sutures and uh, most common use sutures are either Vicro or PDS. For demonstration purposes, I am actually using something that is blue uh, to make it easier to be seen. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually put a suture behind, which is going to be our back suture. There you go. Now you could see that the bowels are both aligned. I have to have this one. Okay. So after tying that one down, and that would be our anterior runner. Now we get our suture for our posterior runner. And that's why we aligned it to make it easy. And so we're going to do this. And what is important is we're actually taking full thickness bites of all the layers. And once the layers are aligned, and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull this one out. We're going to start in the middle. And then afterwards, that will allow us to run the whole thing just completely as a posterior runner. So now we're ready to run the posterior row and so we actually just take let's approximate around five millimeter bites. And you want to make sure you're taking symmetric bites, uh, both full thickness and equidistant as you travel. 
Another important thing is maintaining tension because you could see that one if there's nobody following you. That's one important thing to avoid because the sutures can actually bunch up posteriorly. And so that one you have to guide. And, and as we go forth, moving along here, Again, have to guide this to avoid it bunching up like so. Good. And that's why it's super important to have somebody who is a good assist whenever you're doing this, who will be moving the suture out of your field and maintaining the tension. Also, tissue handling is something that is super important. Making sure that your sutures don't actually get caught right there. Good. As we continue to go, we have the marker for the edges. We will remove pretty soon, as soon as we get there. And you want to make sure that you don't create locking suture because that will be harder to pull and straighten out. So we're now almost done with our posterior row as we hit the edges here. With our posterior row completed, we're gonna be tightening this one and guiding it. Let's see it try to bunch up. And when we look at our posterior row, this is actually imbricated inwards. And so if you look at it from the other side, it actually looks very nice. It doesn't have any mucosal outpouching. And now I can take off my stay suture. And now we're gonna move towards the anterior row. And when you're moving towards the anterior row, this is where we actually change to a canal. Uh, so we are inward, and now you're gonna go back outward. People say, in the bar, out the bar, across the street. I actually just tell them you start outside and you finish outside. So now that you have transitioned outward to do your canal, and we're just gonna take a couple of bites. You start from the outside, now across the other side, and you're still taking equidistant bites, and then you move back inward, back outside. And what this do, does is it actually imbricates the anterior layer. Because remember, you were suturing from the inside, that's why it's imbricated that way. When you start suturing from the outside as you move towards the transition to the anterior layer, it will not imbricate as well, unless you specifically guide it. And using this technique, it actually makes it easier to allow the mucosa to imbricate. So here we usually take two or three bites before we start the other side. We'll take one more. Right there. So now we've done three sutures on this side. Our posterior row is completely in place. And now we're just gonna start our anterior row. 
And our anterior row, that's why I actually placed the suture first for the anterior row, is because it's harder to see the crotch in, create a gap that would be an anastomotic bleed. And so now we're going to do the anterior row. So for the anterior row, you pick it up. This is our edge. We take a bite from the outside. Go. So there's our first side. And we're going to continue doing this until we meet the edges. So here we're going to come from the other side looking at where our suture starts, our knot. Take a full thickness bite. Again, for me, I just use five millimeters as a good practice so that it usually stays pretty even. That's just the ballpark. Take it. You want to make sure you're careful on tissue handling so that you don't cause too much trauma on the bowel. And so here we travel again. Start from the outside. Going inside full thickness. We pick this up. And then move it back hand, move our suture away, probably travel a little bit more. There you go. And then we pick it up for another forehand. There you go. So as we pull, as we tighten, you could see the tissue starting to imbricate. And so we're going to do, we move, and it's very important to always expose your last edge down here. And also very important that you turn your body so that you get the perfect angle. And so as soon as I get it, change my grasp right there. Try to move all my sutures away. Take my bite, again start on the outside, pulling it there, good, move our suture away, keep it all behind, full thickness bite inward, we'll rotate it, do a backhand up here, take a full thickness bite going upward, outward. Try to get that tissue back in. Put, guide the bowel as we pull the suture. Now we can block it. Notice how it tightens. And then for the other side, instead of doing a backhand, we just turn our body so that we can expose the crotch. Get our five millimeter travel, again, full thickness. Pull it out, make sure that your strings don't get stuck together. And come back out, turning your body. And be gentle, have good tissue handling. Got your perpendicular bites, follow the curved needle. Take those sutures away, reload your needle, pull it out, and then gently go full thickness bite again. Follow the curve. And you can tighten it and block it. See that there are no gaps. And then I'm everting the bowel to see, taking off my finger there, making sure we actually have a very good bite right here, full thickness. Regular bite, 
making sure we're full thickness, including getting the mucosa. That's the needle there. Okay, and then coming back out. And notice how the difference of suturing pattern, but it actually ends up in the same goal of inverting the mucosa. Transition up here, expose. Now you could see the gap is maybe 2 cm. Now coming back here, and you notice you have to pay attention where you finished. So we finished on the bottom side or the right side, where my right hand is. So I want to make sure I transition my last bite across, which is going to be on the upper part or towards my left hand, so that when I tie, I get everything across and not be on the same side. There you go. So we're going to be taking our last bite. Good. We're not going to tighten. As you go towards your last bite, I usually keep it quite lax so that I can see. Because if you pull too tight, then you're not going to be able to see and you're going to have a hard time taking the bite and you may end up missing something. And so we keep that one. Pull this apart. And then finally lift it up. You could see we're equidistant. And then we lock it. And now we're going to hold this one. We're going to pull, 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 pull. And we're going to tighten it. And from there, we want to make sure everything's tight and then that the thing is imbricated. See? Right there. And so at this point, we're now going to tie or suture. For me, I only cut one tip in case something does go wrong. We pull both, pull both, make it tight, and then we start tying. So let's look at our anastomosis. Here you could see our anterior layer. When we flip it, you could see your posterior layer. And when you actually look on the inside here, is our anastomosis. The anterior layer looks different from the posterior layer. But the more important thing is that the mucosa is actually imbricated. This layer we actually just closed before, but this is actually our suture line here, posterior layer, and then the anterior layer. And that's how you construct a hand-sewn anastomosis. If you found the video helpful, please click the like and subscribe button and check out for our other videos here.